The human butt is an amazing and unique feature. The largest in the animal kingdom, its size is what gives us the strength to walk and stand upright. It also serves as a fleshy meat cushion that lets you sit at your desk for 14 hours a day straight and feel relatively comfortable. It also gives us a very wide range of movement, but it's this wide range of movement and size that causes a point of tension between your butt and the seat of your pants. Ripping your pants isn't objectively a good thing, and when I ripped these, it wasn't exactly fun. But I was very lucky that when they ripped, they ripped along the seam, meaning they could be repaired and live to see another seat cushion. If you're less lucky, the fabric might shred to pieces right next to the seam, and fixing that is a lot more difficult, if not impossible, to do without making the pants too small. We can't prevent that from happening ever, but there are some things we can do to help it happen less. Now, I feel like it goes without saying that just by living your life, moving, sitting down, and just by possessing a gloriously round and flexible posterior, you're wearing through the back of your pants. But I don't believe this should be something that gets in the way of your life. Clothing should be something that makes your life better and not one that makes you have to be more careful. No, there's two things that you can do that will make your pants last a little bit longer. And the first one is actually something that you can not do. You see, when I worked in retail, we had people come in all the time who had done that, that style of ripping through the pants where the fabric is just shredded apart. And those people consistently would ask to have the seat strengthened or to have the stitch made stronger. Most tailors are going to interpret this as using a smaller stitch length or stitching through it twice. In both those situations, you're making a very, very strong seam. But what happens is that when the fabric shreds, the seam is perfectly intact. The fabric gave out first. And I mean, if you just really want to avoid that situation happening at all, sure, that's one way that you can approach it. But I personally will go with the embarrassment of having split my pants in a way that they can be repaired rather than split my pants and lose them forever, especially if they're part of a suit or a pair of pants that I just really care about. Personally, I will also kind of go out of my way to make the seam a little bit weaker. I altered these pants myself, and I used cotton thread, which is weaker than polyester. You don't have to go that route, and if you go up to a tailor and ask them to stitch your seat with cotton thread, they might think that you're a little bit weird, but I am weird, but also I sew my own clothing, so I feel like I can get away with it. It actually isn't as uh, uncommon as you might think. The jeans I'm wearing right now were actually made with cotton thread as well. It's something that is a little bit out there, but not entirely unheard of. The other thing that you can do is actually wear your pants a little bit higher. While suit trousers and other fine materials might end up ripping mostly at the back of the seat, it's not the only way for trousers to tear. You can actually rip through the crotch. We call that blowing out the crotch, especially in the raw denim community where it happens a lot. The thing is, denim being very durable, the crotch ends up taking the majority of the wear. And a lot of people can end up wearing it too low. I have these two pairs of paper pants here, and the only difference between them is the height of these two horizontal bars, one on each pair of pants. And basically, the higher the crotch seam sits, the less tension is put on them when you walk. If it sits a lot lower, and you're putting more tension on it. And ultimately, that means that you rip through the crotch. If it sits higher, but obviously not too high, then it takes less abuse. You don't want to look like your grandfather and not want to sound like him. But ultimately, higher pants is a good thing for your pants. Now, I don't want you to overthink it. When you're purchasing a new pair of pants, keep that in mind. They often market different rises of pant for you, and that's why, so the crotch can stay at the correct height, and the waistband is determined by the rise they're trying to sell you. Not included in any of these examples is wearing through the thigh of your pants. Um, chub rub is what some people call it. Thick thighs might save lives, but they kill pants. Ultimately, I don't think all of this is a bad thing. The fact that you've worn through your pants is great because it means you've had them for a long period of time and hopefully it means you've worn them in a lot of memorable situations. For me, um, and maybe this is very telling of my kind of personality, I can often remember in my favorite moments in history what I was wearing. Maybe not the entire outfit, but just like a pair of pants or a pair of shoes or a jacket because these pieces are important to me. 
and I keep them for as long as possible. And when I wear through them, that's a sign that they've been with me for a long time. Obviously, if there's any sort of like construction issues and they're made cheaply, that's a whole different thing. But that's why I think we should be purchasing and making good quality clothes so that they last you a long time and you associate good memories with that clothing. I think a lot of people these days can think of clothes as disposable. It's as cheap as it's ever been and we own more clothing than we ever have in history. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't treat our clothes with respect or purchase things with the right amount of intent. I don't know about you, but I like a lot of my pants. And I think I want to keep them just a little while longer. Thanks for watching.